Hi, welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. And with me tonight for the first segment of Community Hotline, we're going to be talking with Pathfinders of Oregon, specifically about the RISE program, which stands for the Rockwood Intercultural Student Experience. Here to uh, talk about that, we have Meredith Olson. You are the program manager at RISE. Welcome. Thank you. And Nadim Cross, a youth advocate for the RISE program. Thanks for being here. Welcome. Appreciate it. Poor Nadim didn't even find out he was going to be on the show until this morning, <laughs> didn't you? Yep. I appreciate you coming at such short notice. But the RISE program, um, well, first of all, tell me a little bit about Pathfinders of Oregon, because that's sort of the umbrella program, is that right? Yeah, Pathfind Pathfinders is sort of the mothership of <laughs> okay, our like programming. Uh, Pathfinders of Oregon is a 501c3 nonprofit that just had its 20-year anniversary. Wow, that's a long time. Very long I didn't time. I realize that. And so we were actually founded in 1993 and started work in the correctional facilities in Oregon. Okay. And our original mission has stayed with us, which is to break the cycle of criminality. Mm -hmm. And we've grown. It's a tough, tough. Uh, it's a big project, yeah, right? So a, we, we started one. inside the prison institutions doing cognitive behavioral interventions, which we have a curriculum called Pathfinders. Okay. And then also doing parenting classes through mm -hmm. our Parenting Inside Out curriculum which is an evidence-based parenting curriculum that we developed in partnership with the Oregon Social Learning Center and Department of Corrections. Wow. And kind of got to be masters of that mm -hmm. world of doing group work with offenders, men yep. and women in the state. Pretty good reputation in the community, don't you? In yeah. In the whole correctional community. Definitely have a strong reputation yeah. in that world. Yeah. And, uh, you know, our executive director talks a lot about we had real exposure working in that world to see what the need was on a community level, that we were seeing multiple generations of families come through our classes and recognizing that the cycle of incarceration is intergenerational. It's like, oh, and I, I remember you when you were a kid because I met you when your dad exactly. was in. Exactly, so yeah, what, what else could we be doing in the community yeah. to help support families to not kind of be sucked into that sinkhole of cycle of violence and incarceration. Yeah. yeah, this is what I know, so this is how I grew up. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a tough one. So did the RISE program come out of that whole thing then? Is that, how, how does that work? RISE came on a little bit later. So in 2003, I believe, is when we started our Center of Family Success. So that was our real foray into the community. We actually started out in East, uh, well, in North Portland in St. Mm -hmm. John's, okay. and oh, then okay. moved to Rockwood a few, years thereafter as there's so much need out here. Yeah, yeah, everything's kind of shifted out to the east. And so that was sort of our community version of what we were doing in the corrections side. And that center still exists, and that's sort of the umbrella under which our program operates. So there's Pathfinders. There's Pathfinders the of Oregon, the success. Center for Family Success. And then RISE underneath that. RISE So underneath the Center that. for Family Success, what kind of things does it offer to families? So the center is really a holistic model. Uh, they offer the Parenting Inside Out classes. They mm -hmm. offer healthy relationships classes. They have peer support groups for things like parenting dads and you know ongoing parenting support for adolescents. Mm, okay. They also offer, offer skill building for just general life skills and, and job hunt support. Mm. And then they also That's have a team one. of really amazing advocates who work specifically to support families, primarily families with DHS involvement or some kind of criminal justice system involvement to help advocate to get their needs met and make sure they're getting the services they need to be successful. Are people normally referred from the from the judicial system? They can be referred a lot of different ways. Pretty typically for the center, most folks are referred through the through DHS, mm -hmm. but we definitely get referrals uh, through That's a variety of different Department of Human Services. So, right, child welfare, yeah. essentially. Okay. But they're okay. definitely referrals that come from other sources, and I can't speak that masterfully to that. To do, do some people just come because they heard about it? 
or is that ever, mm -hmm. does that ever happen? Um, for the center, I think we do have some families who just kind of word of word mouth, mouth and they're yeah. hearing about the services, but I think the majority either come through DHS or through the corrections. Yeah. Okay, so and then you said recently, or, or about less than a year ago, the mm -hmm. RISE program started, and that's the Rockwood Intercultural Student Experience. It's a mouthful. Yeah. Um, Nadine, <laughs> you, you were there from the beginning with that program, correct? Yes. Okay, tell, tell me a little bit about RISE. So the RISE program is an after-school advocacy program, and what we do is we are working with students in the Rockwood area, so that's Reynolds Middle School, HB Lee, and basically what we're doing at each school is we're targeting kids who have either um, issues with absenteeism, issues with behavior, or issues with their academics and their grades. We have a few partners. Uh, one of our partners is I Have a Dream, and they refer students to our program. Also, we get some of our parents uh, through the center who have students who are eligible for the program. We get students that way. And then recently, uh, since our, our new location and our opening, we've had a lot of kids just kind of showing up mm -hmm. just by word of mouth. Really? Um, it's really one of the only centers in the area that kind of has any kind of, you know, social yeah. experience for the students and just a, a space for them to be that's safe. Mm -hmm. They have the Boys and Girls Club that will be coming, yep. but it's not there yet. So that'll be, that'll be a nice addition, I think, to the Rockwood area. But so, so right now, the kids don't have to have a connection to... Um, to a family member incarcerated to be part of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But probably a lot of times that is the case. Um, yeah, I'd say we a have few. a few students who have family that are incar incarcerated or, have, or been. have come through the Center for Family Success. Um, but not always. Yeah. So the, the kids then, you say they're um, kids that maybe have a real problem with absenteeism, then do they come through the schools? Is it, do they, do you right. go to the schools and say, yeah. Give me your kids that really need us. Uh, I mean, it doesn't work exactly work. that way. We do have a presence in the school, um, and so both the schools are pretty familiar with our program. So when mm -hmm. we show up, we usually either connect with counselors at the school. Mm -hmm. um, we also have, like I said, our partner at I Have a Dream, who's also at both schools, and mm -hmm. usually she's kind of the connection piece ah, to the students. Yeah. So she's identifying the students who have the greatest need, and then she's connecting them to us. We'll connect with parents, and usually from there we just get the student engaged. And would you say a pretty good percentage of our kids are dreamers? Yes, we have a large percentage of uh, I Have a Dream students as a result. Nice. Um, it's a great program. Our programs kind of work really well together, I'd yeah. say. Good partnership. I don't know how any nonprofits survive anymore without partners. Yes, you know? absolutely. So what are the age ranges of the kids you work with in the RISE program? So we're looking at middle school, so that's 11 to 13. We have a few kids who are eighth graders who are looking at kind of trying to find some way to support them into their high school years, yeah. but um, really we're looking at that middle school age group. A really um, vulnerable age, yeah. mm -hmm. very vulnerable. And I imagine the I, Dr I Have a Dream program would be a great one for recognizing those kids because they start in kindergarten, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. Just get them all the way through. So that's a great way to do it. So uh, what kinds of things do you as a, as a youth advocate do, Nadine? So I'm checking in with the students at the school. Sometimes I'm just having lunch with the student. Sometimes I'm checking in with their teachers to see how they're doing academically. Um, if there is an issue with behavior, I'm usually checking in with the behavioral counselor or specialist at the school. We're also working with the parents, so if the parents have some sort of need that needs to be filled, we're connecting them with the Center for Family Success to try to get resources for the family. Um, we also have you know, our partners in the community. We work with POIC, I Have a Dream, so sometimes if a student's not a great fit for our program, we'll refer them to other programs. Um, but in general, I'm just there supporting the student kind of on a day-to-day. -day. Um, we're also, we also have our goals and outcomes that we're looking at and we're tracking, so we're looking at grades, we're looking at attendance to see if we're making a difference there. Mm -hmm. We also have an uh, educator, um, Carol, who's on staff now, and she's providing more kind of specific educational tutoring help, nice. and that seems Thank to be you. going really well. Um, and then also we have Boys and Girls Club who's on site and they do all of the oh, cool. academic, or not academic, but the um, activities. Activities, okay, so they are partnering with you then, the Boys and Girls yeah, Club. Yes, so we, yeah. we kind of have a lucky happenstance partnership in that we needed a better space is the space mm -hmm. we were in previously was a really small little house yes. and and just became really challenging to do a lot with the kiddos because we were elbow to elbow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so that site that is going to be developed and, and uh -huh. that Boys and Girls has taken over, that former 70s side, they're letting us stay in for now. Oh, okay. And That's so we've awesome. renovated that Great. whole interior to be a kid-friendly space. Nice. And Boys and Girls helps us a little bit with programming, and so they yeah. help kind of fill the time when the kids come in. Typically the kids are with us about three hours, mm -hmm. Tuesdays through Fridays. And uh, there's sort of a really set process when they come in. They mm -hmm. know, they check in, we feed them, they have a meal, and then we sit and actually do a group 
conversation around feelings. How are you feeling today? And everybody has to share a positive and a negative from their day just to start building some yeah. social communication skills. Good. And then, Good. then we have activities which are structured around healthy social skills that they yeah. need to develop. So You brought a few pictures, I think, of the... Um, yeah. From, from the center there. So yes. maybe we can take a look at those. Sure. You can tell me what we're looking at here. So on the left side there, that's the entrance upstairs to our offices. Okay. And as we mentioned before, our, our sort of, um, we're a program of the Center for Family Success. So that's why you see that over the so door you go there. go on the door there. And then these are some kids that and are this, very active in an activity here. <laughs> yeah, this is actually our old site, which was a ah. house. So it was, um, just a lot smaller space uh -huh. and we had art programming so we would do art programming some days, some days we did um, some actual acting so we had an improv teacher who came nice. in and did some improv How stuff fun. with the kids. I um, that's a good release. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The kids really enjoyed that. We did some um, just kind of like peer-to-peer -peer group discussions around uh -huh. things that are important to them and just challenges. This is a new space. Wow, um, look how much room there is. Yeah, yeah and that's that's room. Just a, a portion of it. You're missing almost half the space there. Right, it's quite large. We have the computer labs. This is kind of the meeting area. So when students come in, we have our check-ins. We all kind of gather around and like Meredith said, we'll talk about our Share kind of highs feelings and lows. And, yeah. and that's actually a photo of a check-in there. Yep. So nice. when you walk in the door, we have a space of couches and there's also a projector screen there on the wall. So there's special nights where we can do movies. Fun. And that prior picture, um, you might have seen there was the a labyrinth thing. on yeah, the floor. Yeah, I was going to say it looked like a labyrinth. And so that's, that's part of, that of a plan moving forward that we're bringing some therapeutic pieces into the program to help these kids with some of the trauma and stress and anxiety that they have to deal with. And so they'll be doing labyrinth walks. Nice. Nice. I like that. I like that. Yeah. First labyrinth I ever walked on was at the grotto. Have you ever been to that? I haven't one? been to that oh, one. It's supposed great. to be beautiful. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty... They're pretty uh, calming and just yeah. absolutely helps center you. It gets yeah. all, it'll get a lot out of that, I'm sure. So what's your biggest challenge in this program? What's, it, what's, what's the hardest thing to, when you're dealing with the kids? There's so many challenges. <laughs> um, Hard to say a bit. Well, what well, are some can, of the challenges? I can say then? from my perspective, um, we're, we're very excited to be out in the community and there's a, it's really sort of bittersweet because we're a young enough program that we're still trying to get our footing mm -hmm. and get our policies and procedures in place and just really know what's going to be best for the kids. And in order to really serve them best, we've had to accept that our processes need to be more fluid. And there were things mm. we thought originally that would be best for the kids. And then we're getting to know the kids, and it's not what's best for them. Trial and, so and error. We need to change it to fit them better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that, that is, you know, there's moving parts that we're constantly trying to manage. And I think another challenge we have is just there, we're going to hit capacity pretty quickly because oh. we can't serve that many kids. And oh, there's definitely tough. a desire. Kiddos showing up. To want to be there and to be able to have to tell them no and we right. can't Ooh, serve them tough. everybody yeah. yeah so what do you need from the community to help support you i mean is is this something that's funded at all by the community is it funded just through grants and you know or or do you need volunteers so um, currently we're funded through a series of different grants and we have more applications in and a few private donors but uh it really only funds our three staff positions so there's mm -hmm. myself nadim and cindy hernandez our other youth advocate and then a uh, part-time Carol Dixon or education person. But it's not, it's, if we have 40 kids, <laughs> we've got advocates who are in the field out actually working with families, they can't always be there. And right, they, right. I'm out in meetings, we need definitely volunteers if people are interested to come in and help, especially now that summer's coming, mm -hmm. to do activities with the kids. Okay. And hopefully have a variety of activities to pick okay. from. You know, so a, if somebody, you know, somebody, um, maybe is musical and could uh -huh. bring in music instruments and maybe teach kids to play Definitely. or or just even if you know sing along or whatever yep. or mm -hmm. if they wanted to like you did the improv theater kind of thing if somebody mm -hmm. came in and you know could help them you know do some skits and whatever or or artwork or mm -hmm. sports i mean does there you have a space there to there, do like just you know do right we, now everything is we have a lot of space to do physical things yep. But we don't, you know, the kids have mentioned they want to do things like Zumba or hip hop dance really? or music classes, and we don't have the capacity to do it. So, you know, if a volunteer could come in twice a month and we'd have Fridays or hip hop class day, whatever mm, that would look fun. like. Yeah. So, okay. So, if people are interested, they could just contact, who is it? They Path could Finders? contact the Center number for, for Pathfinders. <laughs> Okay. And, and that number that you guys have listed is kind of a clearinghouse, and they'll okay. send you to us. Yep. Right. And we can talk about, you know, we've, we've got 
also desires to take the kiddos for field trips. Mm -hmm. mm. So most of these kiddos have never been outside of Rockwood, oh, and okay. um, and really want to be able to expose them to you know going out and hiking in the gorge or seeing the Bonneville Dam or going to Blazers games. Yeah. So another need that we have is you know community donations if people have connections to get tickets to Blazer games or whatever that looks like, right. so we can show these kids those opportunities um, and. Our dream hope would be funding for a small van so that we could actually oh, yeah. drive the kids to go. And about on how many trips. kids? I mean, if they were. <laughs> I'd say we have probably anywhere from 40 enrolled. Um, we probably have about 20 to 25 who are showing up consistently, and that number is kind of increasing each day now that we have our new location. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'd say we have about 25 kids who are showing up pretty regularly. Pretty regularly. Wow. Well, I hope that somebody watching this show tonight will say, hey, Let's I can help out and, they, and get some volunteers. And I know I'd love to get some of the kids in here to take a look at our studio, maybe get them involved in, you know, learning some video skills. Yeah. But they learn faster than anybody else here. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> so thank you both for being on thank here tonight. Thank you for having Any us. Any last thank words you. before we're running out of time? Any last words? Um, I'm going to support our youth in Rockwood. Hey, I like that. that that's a good one. Okay, Community. thank you very much. Yep. Thanks for watching this first segment of Community Hotline. I hope you've learned something about the RISE program and that you will become involved in your community either by volunteering or being supportive of, supportive of the kids in your community. We'll be back with more with the People for Parks. They have an interesting segment on their trip to Nicaragua, so stick around. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.